content to stay in the background, not drawing attention to himself, Benjamin Newton Duke quietly changed his part of the world, contributing to a legacy of education that endures today. Washington Duke started his tobacco business in this simple 1852 building, smaller than a home garage. Decades later, this early business would sprout the historic icons of Duke University, Duke Energy, Irwin Mills, and the American Tobacco Company. But in those early days, for B. and Duke and his siblings, whose mother died when they were young, life at the Duke homestead was framed by work and church. Washington Duke, their father, took the Methodist Church very seriously, and he raised his children to do likewise. Trinity College was the uh, Methodist Church's college for young men. Washington Duke was convinced that Durham ought to have that college, so he offered, I think it was $85,000, which was a lot of money then, if Trinity came to Durham, which it did. By that time, Benjamin Duke, an adult, became the institution's champion. The college was in a very bad way for money, but having brought it to Durham, Ben Duke decided they would have to save the college. That college, Trinity College, would become Duke University. Through Ben Duke's donations, Trinity quickly progressed. Ben Duke made note of the progression in 1902. Trinity College has reached the point of capacity and efficiency to warrant the claim that it is the best institution of learning in the South. Benjamin N. Duke, February 4th, 1902. Here we are at a plaque, the only mention of B. N. Duke's name on an inward-facing wall on East Campus. It was not until 1999 that a statue bearing his likeness was erected here. The 1915 plaque faces inward, not out to the public for display. B. N. Duke, quietly productive, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars constructing campus buildings, including the West Duke Building, the East Duke Building, dormitories, and the beautiful wall around East Campus. Ben Duke wrote the following about the campus progression. We wish to make it an attractive place, not only for students, but a pleasant park for the citizens of our community. Benjamin Newton Duke, October 10th, 1894. A visionary, B. N. Duke not only led the building of structures on campus, but he also built a reputation of academic freedom and excellence for the institution. Not always an easy road. One of Trinity's history professors got in terrible trouble. He started a magazine called the South Atlantic Quarterly, and he published an article entitled Stirring Up the Fires of Race Antipathy. Outrage came especially from the powerful editor of the Raleigh News and Observer, Josephus Daniels. They wanted Bassett's head. They said he's got to go. During this period of controversy, B. N. Duke, as a trustee, along with faculty, stood with Bassett. Walter Hines Page, a Trinity alumnus and respected journalist, wrote to B. N. Duke. Trinity must stand, as you stand, for free thought and free speech. Walter Hines Page to B. N. Duke, November 12, 1903. The faculty stood by Bassett. He offered his resignation, but they had a very important faculty meeting and they refused to accept his resignation. Sort of established the principle of academic freedom, which was a, a novelty then. So Bassett stayed and Ben Duke and his allies on the board were supporters of Bassett. Ben Duke supported academic freedom and reached beyond the established boundaries of the day. The family gave money to a uh, historically black university, Johnson C. Smith. They gave money to North Carolina Central University in Durham. They were starting to have this open-mindedness and a commitment to, to what education could mean for social justice and so forth. Even though they were wealthy and they can be criticized in retrospect for their emphasis on tobacco and so forth. They used that money for something that's really made a huge difference in this state.
Ben Duke stayed true to his humble roots and Carolina heritage through his commitment to students from the Carolinas. Here we are at the statue erected in 1999. As you can see from the inscription here, he was a trustee, first of all, of Trinity College. And during that time, there was a three-year period where he gave scholarships to Carolina students, 50 different people, full scholarships. After the university formed and the Duke family helped Trinity College become a university, he continued on the board of trustees. He continued with his commitment to providing an education to the students of the Carolinas. These two Carolinas where the states were poverty-stricken back when the university began. The states were kind of lowest on the list in terms of education, income level, and so forth. And the, this family knew through their own background that this state and South Carolina too needed a lot of help. And so he had a soft place in his heart for those people who had come up with hardship. They knew something about working people and how to help people make their own way. And so they were especially committed to education because they knew that if given a chance, these hardworking people of the Carolinas could make a difference in their own lives. But he did that very quietly and humbly. Benjamin Duke's legacy remains apparent in the very building standing on East Campus and the long tradition of academic freedom and excellence in Duke classrooms and in the promise of North and South Carolina students who receive the scholarship named in Being Duke's honor. Being Duke scholars carry on the history of a man with distinctive vision, a quiet leader who began life in a home surrounded by North Carolina tobacco fields, Benjamin Newton Duke.